guys, it's Will from The Game Lounge. And today I wanna to talk a little about shaders and looking at trying to recreate that classic CRT look versus the more filtered, blurred, modern look. Now, personally, I can see the merits in both. And I wanna talk about a little mini life hack that I like to do. Now, I use Launchbox and Big Box that you can see here as my front end. Uh, but what I like to do is have two instances of RetroArch installed that I can basically load one or the other with different configs. So let's start by taking a look at each. Now I use Big Box, as I say, and you can basically take this and you can use the launch with function and you can call your RetroArch instances anything you like. So I've gone with classic and modern here. And if we launch with the classic, you can see that this is a CRT Royale shader coming up here. Um, and I'm actually using the CRT Royale with Bloom uh, and the addition of Balag's composite option ticked. And you can see here, it's a really gritty, true look that I think replicates CRT really, really well. Now, it is pretty CPU intensive, this one, especially if you have things like Run Ahead and Rewind enabled, but I think it looks really, really good and gives it that, that really great look. Now, next one we're gonna look at is the Scale FX uh, with Hybrid, which I I think is a really, really impressive, crisp looking uh, shader effect. It almost looks like remastered. And if you use the hybrid version as well, it uses this reverse anti-aliasing, which creates some really interesting depth and shading effects, which again, I am very, very impressed by. Now, when we take a look, um, and one of the big, big reasons to try different versions, if we look at them both here, you can see the differences uh, in on the left and right, let's freeze it. Um, and take a look, you see that real depth of color on the left, and yet that really, really crisp, but smooth, unpixelated look on the right, which is good. And I think if you take, especially for pre-rendered 3D games, we're looking at Donkey Kong Country now, I think that this makes even more of a difference to use a shader. You can see here this really dark, deep color set for uh, Donkey Kong Country that looks really, really, really nice. Just This is just like I remember the game, but then if we switch to the scale effects, again, it's a very different look. It's brighter, but you can really see that depth in the foliage and all of that detail coming through when you use scale effects. Now, let me be clear here. I, I don't care what people use. I know there's a lot of debates out there. Some people like original hardware. Some people like this customized with just running through emulation but with no filtering and just that pure pixel look you know for me play the games you know I think people should be playing the games however they want to but I think you can really get the best out of it with some of the great um, community work that is out there that looks so much better than anything currently commercially out there now I'm going to show you some other things that I use this dual setup for and the first thing is is the Dreamcast you can see here Shenmue um, the intro sequence where I'm switching between the standard 4x3 look if I want to play it the way I used to, um, but then switching to that great widescreen look, which is is really, really impressive. It's actually used by uh, and achieved by cheat codes. And I think you can see the depth of field here. This is something they couldn't even achieve actually when they remastered this game recently on the Xbox and PS4. Um, but you know, again, the community have managed to do this. And I love having that optionality by using different versions of RetroArch in order to actually achieve this. Uh, and there's loads of other usage. You'll see here, I'm, I'm playing a Game Boy game now. I've got this dot matrix green, which is the Game Boy that I originally had. And this is incredibly nostalgic and looks great. Um, and is, you know, really, really nice to see, but equally, Sometimes I like to to use the Super Game Boy. This is not something that I actually owned back in the day. I picked one of these up much, much later on. But, you know, to be able to just very seamlessly switch between these two, I think is, uh, is really, really impressive. Um, and you can see here, obviously, these transitions that I'm actually managing to achieve is quite simply done by save state swapping. So even though you've got two different versions of RetroArch, the maintenance that you have to do is minimal because you can use the same directory for playlists, save games, save states, BIOS files, etc. So it's there's very, very little overhead. Uh, another great use here, you can see 
this is the PlayStation and this is the PlayStation native resolution, no PGXP correction, which stops those sort of shimmering 3D polygons. Um, and you can see here, still looks great, still brings back a huge amount of nostalgia for me. Um, but obviously there's, there's better ways to play this now and PlayStation emulation is incredibly advanced. And if we take a look here, at the much much higher resolution with pgxp it really really does look you know some filtered 2d sprites there as well it really makes the games pop and look fantastic uh, but equally i can see purists liking both so that's my little tip for you guys today um, what hacks do you guys have that you use that you know could be useful to people out there is there a great shader that i'm completely unaware of that is that is that i should check out also you know what you've seen today would you rather see more in-depth tutorials with how to achieve this i'll put some stuff in the uh description of course with with various links and you know the bezels that you've seen today in the video are all from batacera take care and have a great day